Hello and welcome to Faith with Flavor. You might remember today's guest from a previous Faith with Flavor episode. Actor Noel G is back today to introduce to us his wife, and today she is going to share a powerful testimony on how she found Christ and got delivered from an ungodly soul tie. Stay tuned for her story. But first, I recently traveled to Chicago where I got to try deep dish pizza for the very first time. Take a look at all of my adventures in, my, in the Windy City in my Chicago vlog. Hey guys, I'm on my way to the airport once again. This time I'm headed to Chicago. And do you remember him? A personal driver. <laughs> so anyways, we're gonna go to the Jumpstart Experience Conference with Pastor Choco and I'm so excited to get to know him and also get to know a few of our programmers on TV and Salsa a little bit better. So I'll keep you posted with what's going on. Talk to you later. Just checked into my room. It's so pretty over here. I love Chicago. It's so full of color and greenery. And check out this amazing view of my room. You guys, this view is unreal. Looks like a scene from a movie or something. Just look at how green it is and beautiful and lush. I love Chicago already. It's a perfect day. So we just arrived at Pizzeria Du. We heard it's a really good spot right here in Chicago, downtown. Okay, so here's our appetizer to get us started. You guys ready? Oh yes. <laughs> Dig in, guys. <clears throat> it's usually good. Oh my god, they're real hot. It's usually good free actually, so. <laughs> it's gonna be like quick hurry move. Well, I'm not shy. Hot. This is serious business. I am hungry. I'm hangry. <laughs> mm. Stamp of approval. It's like in Chicago, you can rent bikes. As you can see, they're all lined up ready for you to rent. Chicago, Illinois at the New Life Covenant Church. We're here for the Jumpstart experience. So follow me as we go inside and see what they're up to. So right now I'm having some authentic Puerto Rican food at this restaurant called La Palma and I ordered some rice with beans, steak with vegetables and I wanted to try the, the pork that they had and this is an appetizer. I'm not sure what it has. I think she said something about having beef inside. We're on our way to Portillo's, the place known for their amazing hot dogs. So we're gonna give them a try. Follow. We got the chili cheese hot dog. Looks delicious. And a salad, cause balance. Hi hey guys, we're walking downtown. It's really cold in Chicago, the windy city. I'm not from around here. 
but it's pretty. Check out the skyscraper. How do people live like this? It's freezing out here. Freezing. <laughs> If you just started tuning into the show, that was a little taste of Chicago through my eyes. I really hope you enjoyed it. Well, my very special guest this week is Noelle and Tomasa Guglielmi. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you. Noelle, welcome What's back. Up? Chilling. How you feeling? You're no stranger to <laughs> Faith with Flavor. You've been here before. Right, right. So tell me a little bit about what has happened in your life since your last visit. Um, you know, a lot. It's just been, uh, it's been good, you know, working on some new projects. They uh, turned Training Day into a television show, so that's really cool. It's on CBS, and I was the only character that they brought back from the movie and the show, so I'm excited about that. Still favor, got some favor, favor. Favor, favor, right, <laughs> exactly. Um, and so that's cool, and then, you know, a reoccurring role still on the Fresh Off the Boat. Then I got a new movie coming out with uh, Eva Longoria, Low Riders. So we just opened up the film festival and uh, the LA Film Festival, which is big and huge and just a lot of things happening. So it's been crazy and I, I, I ain't mad at nobody at work, so. That's awesome. And today you brought us a very special guest That's on the my show. That's my boo. That's my <laughs> Tomasa, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for having me. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself and you know what you do. Um, well, I'm Noelle G's wife. Um, right now uh, we run our youth ministry and um, I'm just uh, I'm just living in LA. Um, come from Sacramento. I've been in uh, LA for eight years now, and um, I'm loving it. Um, just uh, we got saved together, and uh, we're just living life and loving life, and uh, just being a wife of an actor right now. That's so, awesome. Yeah. And what is that like for you? Uh, it's it's uh, it's hard um, at times, you know. Um, but um, God's been helping me with that. It's um, not an easy road, but um, it is uh, something that I'm, um, it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that uh, people ask all the time, I bet it's so exciting, you know, living the life of an actor, I mean, of an actor, of a wife, you know, mm -hmm. being a, an actor's wife. And um, it is, it is, it's fun, the traveling, everything like that. But um, it is a challenge because I deal with uh, different things, not a normal uh, wife has to deal with. Mm. But um, uh, I love it. I do. I do. I love it. I love that I'm with um, someone who is living his dream. Mm. And um, I just love being a supportive wife. So, yeah. That's so awesome. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about your upbringing and what was growing up like. Uh, I did uh, grow up um, as a Christian, um, single mom, just me and my sister. Um, I was 14 years old when I gave my life to Christ. Mm. Um, but like every girl, um, I was just looking for love in all the wrong places. And I looked for a love in um, a boy. And um, I, I was 16 years old and um, just looking for love in all the wrong places. And um, at 21 years old, I was married. Uh, somebody that my mom did not approve of. Um, I left the Lord and uh, did my own thing and um, was married for a couple years. And I did that for a little bit and um, I just kind of lost my identity and I didn't know who I was. And um, I got out of that bad situation. It was a lot of mental abuse, physical abuse. And um, I lived that life for a little bit. And um, I got out, of that, got out of that situation and um, I met Noel and uh, gave Thanks my life to Christ. And, um, like 15 <laughs> times, babe. <laughs> Go ahead. And I gave my life to Christ, and I've been living for God ever since. That's so awesome. Mm -hmm. Now, when you met her, Noel, what was like your first initial thought of, you know, seeing this beautiful woman standing next to you? <laughs> right. No, it was kind of crazy because um, the thing that got me about her was. Uh, you know, we met in the world, first of all. We weren't saved when we met. And so a lot of girls that I met, like when I was in the world, it was kind of funny because in the first half hour, they always brought up acting. And it was always like, so what tripped me out about her was when I met her, it was kind of crazy because for like, for like one month, she never brought up like the movies or anything. 
And it kind of like tripped me out. So I was like, what? Like this girl's never. And there was one time I remember we were eating at um, this place and it was funny, like a couple seen us eating and they stopped and they were like, oh, can we get a picture with you, whatever? And I was like, yeah, of course, whatever. And, and in my head, I go, okay, now she's gonna bring up the movies. Mm -hmm. And she never brought it up still. She just <laughs> went back to like normal eating. So to this day, we have like a little joke, you know? I'm like, is your game like really that good? <laughs> or did you really not care about me being an actor? Mm -hmm. And uh, long story short, you know, that's kind of what really stuck out to me about her because um, I'm not saying, you know, this or that, I'm just saying it was kind of funny because with most girls, it was like immediately like, let's talk about acting, let's talk about your films, and they would bring up movies, 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 and you know, she was the first girl who never ever brought that up. It was more so about me and who I was. And so that's why we make a joke. I'm like, on your deathbed, you're gonna tell me like <laughs> my game was tight and then she's gonna croak or something. No, I'm just kidding, but you know what I mean? So I'm sitting there like, all right, all right. But that's what got me about her. And then um, she came with me to this Christian seminar where uh, we got saved at the same time. And then uh, long story short, it was kind of funny. We didn't want to live in sin and that's why we got married and mm -hmm. we both got saved on the same day, November of 2008 and it's been crazy ever since. So. Wow, that's so awesome. And, well, um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what was different, um, Tomasa, about Noel than, than the other guy that you were with before him? The one thing that stood out to me was, Noel was the first person that said, um, I have an issue and my issue is I've always wanted God but I have struggles and I want to serve God I just don't want to do it alone no one in my life has ever said I want God mm. no one not one person and also Noel said I want to serve God and I want to take care of you I don't want you to do the things that you're doing you're too good for that you're better than that and I've, those are the things I always wanted to hear and it was so surprising for me to hear those things from someone like Noel, because I knew that Noel was an actor. I knew the things that he was doing, and it was just so shocking to me that someone like Noel would want this for me and want to do these things with me, because I was dating the average guys and the guys that had the nine to fives. And Noel was this guy, I was in Northern California, for, for one thing, I was in Sacramento, Noel was in LA, in Southern California. We were so far away from each other and I thought, me, like I'm way over here, mm -hmm. you're way over there. And he chose me and I just kept thinking to myself, I know this guy has to have at least five girlfriends, 10 girlfriends, mm -hmm. why me? And oh. I just knew for me in my heart that this was something that I was praying for, crying for in my heart. And I knew that this was God saying, this is for you. This was a desire in your heart. So I knew that Noel was something different. And I knew that this was a prayer of mine. And it just had to be, it just why me? Why, why this guy, God? Why does he want God? Why, and why is he choosing me? And what, so. were, what were you doing that Noel didn't want you to do anymore? Well, at the time, I did not tell Noel, but at the time I was um, dancing. I was an exotic dancer. I was dancing in, in clubs and I was doing it for the last maybe three or four years when I met Noel. And this was something that I, I was doing secretly. No one knew. I wasn't going around telling people that I was doing it. My family didn't know it. No one knew. And um, when I met Noel, I told him and he said, you don't belong in that place. Mm -hmm. You don't belong doing that. You should not be doing that and um, I wanna take care of you, and I wanna marry you, and I want you to live here with me, and we can serve God together, and I will take care of you. And that just like, inside me, I, I knew that that was God, I knew. What led you to become an exotic dancer? Well, at the time when I was married to my first husband, um, that was a, um, how do you say, I guess um, something that he wanted me to do, and, um, for me, I was always looking to please him. Anything that he wanted for me to do, I was whatever he wanted me to do. And because he was so mental and physical abusive with me, I really was um, controlled. And now I look back at it, those are things that I allowed him for me to do. And I know now, um, having God in my heart, that God always gives us an exit and a way out. And I know that um, I was just manipulated, but I know that um, I could have easily got out all those things, but I chose 
to do those things. And um, so when I was in that relationship, um, I was doing all the things that he wanted me to do. And I got into those things. I got into the dancing and the drugs and the alcohol and all the things that I did not want to do. Looking back at your life, is there anything that you would have done differently? <sighs> yeah. The one thing I always say and I tell our youth is to listen to your parents. Because mm -hmm. everything that I went through, my mom was trying to stop me from doing. And I fought and I fought and I fought. And I know that my mom loved me and everything that she was trying to keep me from was because she loved me. And I just wanted to do what I wanted to do. And um, my mom was trying to keep me from the boy. She was trying to keep me from, you know, going left to right. And I just wanted to do what I wanted to do. And I know now that looking back, my mom just loved me. She just didn't want me to be hurt. She seen what I didn't see. And I wish I would have just listened to my mom, but she, my, I know that now today that God turned my mess into a message. So, mm -hmm. What is your advice to women who may be in that similar situation in an abusive relationship? I really do believe that, um, like I said, that God always gives us a way out. That, um, that what we think that we are stuck in, we're not. And um, not to be manipulated because we're, you know, men can be manipulated, manipulative. And uh, I really do believe that I, you know, I was young and I do believe I loved him, but it, I was just young and just looking for love in all the wrong places. And if I, I really just think that we need to love God first and know God and know how to love and God will show us who we need to love and how to love. And if we love God first, God will just lead us. Because I really do believe that my mom was trying to show me the way to serve God, but I just didn't want to do it. I just didn't want to be obedient. Noelle, when you met Tomasa and you told her that she didn't have to do this anymore, what, what were you thinking in that moment that made you say those words to her? Well, at that time, um, I was going through some stuff myself, and I always knew God at the age of, like, 15. That's when I was first introduced to God. And then, you know, when Hollywood kicked off, the money came in, turned my back on God, and my whole life was like a party for 20 years. So I was always in the struggle. You know, I was the one, like, sinning, but I was, like, you know, smoking weed and drinking, but being like, dude, you need God in your life, but yet I'm doing the same thing, you know? And, like, <laughs> girls would tell me they had mess. Like, I couldn't even like sin correctly, cause I was like the homie, like talking about the rapture, but yet I was still partying and acting a fool. So it's like, you know, they would just laugh at me. Like the guy's a fool, like he's funny. So I was like, you know, that type. So I say all that to fast forward and say like, at the point of my life when I met Tomasa, it was kind of crazy because what ended up happening was I was uh, going like really through it at that time. And um, I did something at that time that uh, kind of like turned my life around because I hurt this one girl and I played her for some money and stuff because I was in the middle of losing my situation, my house. And one of my homeboys was like, you know what, like, why don't you just play this, this girl for some money and whatever. And I did that. And when she broke down and started crying, I remember like she couldn't breathe and I just saw like what I did to her. And I told this girl straight up, like, I was like, well, I, well, I apologize, but in my head I said, I never want to hurt anybody again because it really wasn't me. I did it out of the desperation of just, I was in a bad situation. And I got screwed over by my best friend who I never thought I'd get screwed over by. And there's a lot of detail and all that stuff. But my point is I was starting to become someone who I never really was in my heart. You know what I mean? When I was banging at time, when I was like gang banging at the time, and I was doing all my dirt, that was like gangster stuff. So that was kind of different because I was robbing houses and robbing cars, and I was doing all kinds of mess like that, you know. But I, I never really had the heart because I grew up like in a middle class home. I didn't really like. I was in a middle class home, and then I got thrown into the streets, if that makes sense. And so. You know, my choices were my choices, but I'm just making a point that when I was thrown into that, then I got into this tough exterior of like, I don't care about this, I don't care about that. But it was funny because when I was in that, I had the word of God planted in me. 
at a young age. And then the money came in and that just amplified my sin, right? With, with the connections of television also, and now you're known and now, you know, it just made stuff easier to get. And so fast forward, when I met Tomasa, my whole point is that I was at a point where my life was really going downhill and I was hurting people, but I really wasn't that inside. Like, I just didn't want to hurt people. Like, I have a good heart, and I didn't want to, like, you know, just, I couldn't do that to people. So at the time I met her, I, uh, was, I was just going through it. Like, there's a lot of detail. We can't even cover it on this show. We need three hours for that one. <laughs> but my whole point is, so I'm trying to cut out fat, get to the detail, and get to the meat <laughs> and the bones here. But my whole point is, when I met Tomasa, that's at the time she met me. Mm. So when you ask that question, my answer is, I was going through it so hard, so deep, realizing that I was becoming like a monster, in other words. And that's why I was like, enough's enough. And so I met her, and, I, and, and, and then it was kind of funny, because like I said before, she never brought up the movies. Still wondering if that's good game or not. We'll cover that later. <laughs> but my whole point is, like, I meet her, and I'm sitting here, and I'm like, you know what? Like, this might be the one. So I, so I came out, and I just said, I got something to tell you, and you might trip out. And she's like, what? And I remember this phone conversation, and I said, I got to tell you something. She's like, what? And then I just said it like this. I go, I know God at a young age, and I turned my back on God, and I said, at one time I was a Christian, and I go, Hollywood kicked off, and I forget Christianity. I'm rolling my way, but I said, now, I go, what do you think if me and you are together, but what do you think if we're together and we serve God together? And I was just tripping out. I didn't know what she was gonna say. And she says, yeah, and we get into this conversation. Now we're talking about God, two unsaved people, wow. talking about God, not knowing what to do, not knowing how to do it. We're just agreeing on, let's go serve God and go full force. Aww. And then uh, fast forward, we get saved at this Christian seminar and, uh, and boom, we just, you know, jumped into it. God has a funny way of bringing people together, yes. you know, in marriage. And how do you know that God brought you two together, Noel? Um, I think that was the moment by agreeing on it, by me asking her what's up and where I was at in my life, where she was at in her life. I don't think that God is a coincidence or luck. I think that it's meant to be, however it happens. Mm -hmm. Uh, whether it's, you know, said as a miracle or a fluke or whatever the world wants to call it, I believe it was an appointment set up by God, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I think that the reason why we came together and why we met at that time is because God had a purpose and a plan in our life. And, you know, when God calls you, it's like that, you know, I don't know how to say it correctly or what, I'm a little ghetto, I'm sorry, but they, uh, you know, when God calls you, you may not be ready when he calls you, but if he called you, he's gonna get you ready. And so we just jumped in full force, like, all right, God, let's take this roller coaster and see where it rides, you know? There's a scripture that okay. says that the gifts and the calling of God is irrevocable. And you guys are a perfect example of that because, you know, you fell away but God had his hand upon your life and now you serve him at this amazing ministry known as PCW Blast. Tell our audience a little bit about it. Well, Blast is uh, kind of a trip and I'll give you a quick praise report, miracle of God that I love, you know. So I've been at my church for eight years. It's Praise Chapel Whittier, Pastor Mark Amaya and Pastor Darlene. And um, they've been a very great example in our life and played Superman in our marriage. <laughs> every now and then, you know, because, you know, we're not perfect, we're normal, we go through it like anybody else, you know, there's been times where we fight and argue and times where we wanted to give up in our Christian walk, but our pastors have came and saved the day and, you know, we thank God for that, so we're still pushing through and, you know, um, surviving on God's strength and prayers. Um, but to fast forward with Blast, the way that it got started was, um, and I'll try to keep this as short as possible, so we've been at our church for eight years. And I've been there for six of those years because we've been doing Blast now for about two years and four months. And our, um, our deal with Blast of what happened was Blast was 20 kids or less for six years. And I said, this youth ministry needs help. And we were in the middle of changing buildings. And so what ended up happening was I said, I got an idea. 
And so I went to all the nearby high schools of our church within a five mile radius, introduced myself to the principal and I said, hey, my name is so-and-so from such and such. I like to do an assembly for your kids and all I ask for is no charge to you. And I just wanna pass out a flyer at the end of the assembly. Well, long story short, the first day of our youth ministry, for six years or less, we were 20 kids or less Wow. for six years. And what happened was I, when I went to all the nearby high schools, our very first day of blast at our youth ministry, we had over 500 people show up, kids from all the different high schools that I attacked. And we had over 200 salvations. And overnight like wow. this, just being obedient to God's word, now to this day from two years ago, we run about 100, 150 kids. Yeah. Praise God. Tomasa, I want you to do me a favor and look into that camera. Maybe there is a young woman or man watching and they feel stuck. They feel in, they're in that place where you guys were, where you guys were, you know, kind of had one foot in and one foot out, but they really have a heart to serve God. Would you just encourage them right now? You know, um, eight years ago, um, I was on the couch and I was praying out to God crying and I said, God, I'm tired of my life. I'm tired of doing what I was doing. And uh, I said, I, I can't do this anymore. And I cried out to God. And I believe that God really heard my prayer because two weeks later I met Noel and he said, I wanna serve God, will you do it with me? So that told me in my heart that there is a God and he loves me. And what God has done for me, he can do for you. So I believe in prayer because I know that God answered my prayer and I know that God can answer yours. So God is no respecter of person. Pray, pray, pray. Everything that Noel had just said is all true. You know, when he said he came to me and said, you know, he wants to serve God, that was all true. And I do believe in divine appointment. Meeting Noel was a divine appointment and God could have a divine appointment with you. Amen. Thank you guys so much for being on the show. And thank you at home for watching Faith with Flavor. Please stay connected with me via all my social media sites. God bless you. I love you. Bye-bye.